Building upon the previous lesson, we are going to see how to join a game world and have multiple players be able to join the same world. This is going through the matchmaking system and what's called authoritative multiplayer part of Nakama. To do so, we are going to write some server code using the Lua programming language. When many players are interacting in the same match or the same game, you want the server or at least the host to double check everything that everyone is doing to prevent any cheating from happening. So that's the role of that code here. It's going to run a game loop on the server. In our case, it's going to run 10 times per second. We'll see that in detail in a moment. And that code is going to check and validate what every player is doing. Now, we're not going to do too much. We're just going to lay down the foundations. Then we will see in the Godot Nakama demo, I will give you an overview of the code we use to make the characters interact with one another. And you can already see that it involves quite a bit more code, which is why we're not going to go through it step by step, but I'm going to give you an overview of it instead. But with that, let's get started. We're gonna start by writing that module as our Godot site code is going to depend on it. Here I am in my Godot project. I have one directory for Godot and one called Nakama with my Docker Compose file. We are going to write some modules that will be run by the server. To do so, you want to add a modules directory. Uh, I'm gonna add that now, so modules. And enter it and place your Lua or Go files in there. They're going to be run automatically by Nakama when we start the server. So I'm going to create a new file called world underscore control dot Lua and we can get started in there. This one is going to define the base API for the authoritative multiplayer that uh, we are going to code. You can find a complete documentation for that and code reference linked in the description below. It's the authoritative multiplayer page in the Nakama documentation. Here, I'm going to show you the minimal setup to get this working so we can have multiple players joining the same world. And then we'll see in the final demo how we coded all that to have a bit more complexity, how we have the game loop essentially. But here it's just the basics. We're going to need to export a set of functions that Nakama expects. So we're going to create a local variable, a local table. Here it's called world control like the module. Note that a convention in Lua is also to call it M like that for the, the module that's going to hold some functions. And we're going to return it at the end of the module, at the end of the file. We need to define five functions here. The first one is going to be match in it. So I'm going to insert a new function. You have to call it every time world control dot uh, match in it so the function gets registered into our world control table and each of these functions is going to take a set of parameters and that is defined in the Nakama documentation so if we go there to um, match in it it takes a context object and parameters I'll let you read the reference on context object to see what you can find in there. But what's important is you also get the data that you must return from the function. We need to return a state, a tick rate, and a label. So we need the context and params keywords there, arguments, and we are going to define the three variables that we need to return. First, we're going to have the state. The state is a table that you create however you'd like. So we're going to have a key called presences in there. And in Lua, you have to use the equal sign to assign values to a key. Similar to Godot, actually, you can use the same syntax. This state, we're going to pass from function to function in the match loops, and we're going to update ourselves however we want. So we want the presences here to keep track of how many players and who is connected to the match. Then we want the tick rate. This is the frame rate on your server, the frame rate of that match. How many times per second the Nakama server is going to run a function that we'll define in a moment called match loop. So in that case, 10 times per second. The higher the tick rate, the more resource intensive the game becomes 
but also the more responsive it can be for the players. Depends on their connection, their ping, but this can help have more reactive physics, etc. And finally, the label is the title of the match that the players could use, for example, if you had a server search interface or match search interface where players can look for a specific match with their friends or something like that, you could list these labels in the client in Godot. Anyway, we're going to call it game world. It will be the only world we're going to have here. We're not going to create multiple. And so we're going to return our parameters. So to return a list of parameters, I guess it returns as a table as well. Seems everything is based around tables in Lua. We can just use commas like in Python. So we return the state, the tick rate and the label. All right, that's our match in it. Then we have to add a few functions related to joining and leaving the match. So we have three of them. I'm going to create a function template and we're going to add world control dot. Uh, let's start with match join attempt. So someone tries to join the match. This one takes five parameters. Context, dispatcher, tick, state, no, six, sorry, presence and metadata. The context is the same context object as for match init. The dispatcher is an object that allows you to broadcast messages to other clients, for example. So it's an object that has some methods to spread data, send messages, things like these. Like, for example, you could say this player has joined. The tick is an integer that represents the current frame of the match. So if you want to send that to the player, for example, if you have some game world simulation in real time, uh, you can send the tick number so the game can simulate the state up until there and you don't have to send all the data through the server. State is our state variable. Presence is going to be this player that's trying to join, so a given client. And well, metadata can be any kind of metadata. From this function, we have to return the state object that we can update if we'd like to. And we have to return true or false if we accept or reject the player's connection. So our default return path will return the non-modified state and true, the player could join. And then we want to have a check to see if the player has already logged in and tried to join the match. We can say if state dot presents is uh, presence dot user ID. So each presence that we get from Nakama is going to have a few parameters and one of them is the unique ID of the user. So we can say if it's not equal to nil, so if this key exists in our table, note that the not in Lua uses that tilde symbol, we can say then we're going to return state false. So we return the state object, then we refuse the user's connection and we can pass an extra error message there. So we can say the user is already logged in and we end the block with the end keyword. All right, I'm going to copy that function for the match join function. So I'm duplicating the same function. I'm just going to rename it to match join. Match join takes slightly different parameters. So the first four are the same, but you don't have the metadata. And instead of one presence, you're going to have a list or a table of presences. And we can remove the code that we have in there. The match join function tells you that multiple players joined the match and it might batch them. For example, if you quickly have many players joining it, so you might have three, four new players that join the world, in which case we can use that information to update our state table. So we're going to use the IPES function to get key item pairs from our presences here. So we're just going to use the value, but we don't need the key. And we're going to take the presence in IPES presences. This is a function that gives us item pairs. We are going to do state dot presences, we're going to add new keys using the presence objects user ID or presence table, should I say, and we're going to assign the presence to it. So we loop over these new presences, the persons who joined the match that went through match train attempt. And for each of them, we're going to use the user ID, uh, that's a unique idea as a key and uh, keep track 
of the corresponding presence. That way, when people leave, we can free that from the presences dictionary. And uh, in a complete game, you can use that information to tell the client these players left. You can use it to have a pop-up notification, for example, that one player left, like we have in the final demo. With that, you want to return just the state object updated. So we've effectively modified it. We have a very similar function that is match leave. So we're going to copy match join and I'm going to swap that, substitute leave to the word join. This one takes the same parameters. The code is going to be almost the same. We want to remove the players that left the game from the state table. So we're going to replace presence here by nil. Then we have two more functions to, to add. I forgot one at the beginning. Uh, we have six and not five. So we're going to have well control dot match loop. It's the main loop of the game match. It's going to run tick rate times per second, in our case 10. So it takes the context dispatcher, it takes the tick state, and a list of messages that could have been uh, passed to the function. In our case, we're just going to return the state. We're not going to have uh, gameplay checks, but just note that this is the, the kind of function where you would check for what the players did, the kind of inputs they entered, and validate their state. You ensure that they are not moving to an invalid position, etc. And that depends entirely on the game. Finally, we have the function match terminate. This one is going to be run when the match was terminated uh, by the server on the server side. And it takes almost the same parameters as match loop. Only the last one is grace seconds. It's a duration in seconds for all clients to do things such as leaving the match slowly, playing a bit of an animation, taking the players back to the menu, cleaning up the state depends on the game. But there again, we are going to return an updated state object mainly. And this is the base setup, right? This is the minimal setup that you need to get your authoritative multiplayer server started. For more information, I invite you to read the authoritative multiplayer docs page. The link is in the description below. It has lots of information. You have the API, but also the code reference there and all the objects that you can use and functions that you call to help you. The code we wrote here allows us to uh, define the matchmaking system and the match loop on the Nakama server. Now we need a way for the player to join that match. To do so, we need to define an RPC, a remote procedure call. That's just a function that you can call on the server from the client. So let's create a new file called world RPC, not RPG, RPC.lua. And we're going to define that function in there. I'm first going to require the Nakama module because we're going to need it to register that remote procedure call. So let's create a new variable Nakama where we require the Nakama module. Then we want to call Nakama.registerRPC at the end of the file. We're going to pass it the identifier of a function. So we're going to create that function in a second, but let's call it get world ID. And then we have to pass it a string, a name to the function that we'll call from Guto. So get world ID, we're going to use the same. Okay, so I'm going to create a local function for that. Let's see, local function and let's call it get world ID. As it's an RPC, it's going to get two parameters. We're not gonna use them, but these ones should be context and payload. So context being your context object as usual, payload being any table of data, could be some JSON data that you're getting from um, Godot in that case, I guess. But we're not going to use the parameters, so let's use the underscore sign instead. What we're going to do here is either create a match if none exists or return the only match that we're going to ever create from this function. We want to create one match for the purpose of this demo. Of course, if you want complete matchmaking and all, you would need a bit more code. But let's first get the matches from Nakama. So the Nakama module has a function called match list that's going to give you 
a table, an array of matches. Then we can see if we have a current match. So to do that, we get the current match as the first index in the matches table. It's a table, it works like an array. Just note that in Lua, the first index in an array is one and not zero. Now what we can do is if that index does not exist in the array, the current match value is going to be equal to nil. So we can say if current match is equal to nil, then return uh, nakama.matchCreate. It's going to create a match and return its ID. So we're going to use the world control module that we just created and we're going to pass an empty table of data. We don't need to pass in any information right there. Otherwise, we are going to return the current match dot match ID. It's a field that every match has. It has a unique identifier that we need to pass to Godot for the player to be able to join that match. And with that, we have our server side code done to have our matchmaking system and to be able to join worlds. So with that, I'll head to my shell and I'm going to navigate to my Nakama directory there where I have the doccompose.yaml file. Then I'm going to call docker compose up to start the server. This is just to show you in the logged messages, you should find found runtime modules, count two, we have worldcontrol.lua and worldrpc.lua. This confirms that they have been found. And then you can see whenever you registered an RPC function, so registered Lua RPC function invocation, we have get world ID. So we will be able to call it from our client. Be sure that you have that. If you don't, it's probably that you have an error in your code. But if that's the case, you should get some error message somewhere in there. You want to read that log generally to debug your server startup and runtime. But with that, we're going to move on to the Godot project to work on draining the world.